Good morning, everyone. Today, I want to give you a video that's going to talk about the next phase of your project and what needs to be completed as well as how. So let's begin. Um, your groups, I will be choosing your topics or I'll be letting you know which topic uh, gets approved today, early today. Um, it's not going to be an easy process. There are a few of you that have these same topics um, that you're interested in. I went through and I looked at some of them already and I'm getting a lot of the same ones. So if you have a same topic interest as someone else, I will be sending you an email. Um, so keep a lookout for it. Once your topic has been approved and you are ready to go, here are the steps that's going to happen. The leaders here, the ones that are highlighted in red are your group leaders. I'm going to share all of the documents for this project with them. Your group leaders will then share you in on the document so that everyone in the group has access to edit it. All right. So make sure you look out and you contact your group leader for all the information that you need for the project in terms of documents. The first document I'm going to share with your group leaders is the World War II PBL checklist. So I put together a checklist for you that literally highlights every single thing you're going to need to accomplish for this project. What's nice about this is that it lays everything out and there's no surprises. Um, go through with your group and check off or mark that you've completed all the different requirements for the project. Yesterday, or last block, you guys focused on the gallery walk. That should be done, hence the check mark here. As soon as you're done with your historical context, well, I'll explain in a second, you're going to copy the check mark, and then you're going to paste it in. All right, and make sure that you check things off as you go along so that you know what you're finished, what, what you're, you've completed, and what still needs to be completed. All right, so that's the first thing I'm going to share with your partners. The second thing I'm going to share with your partners is the context, which is right here. Once you have a topic chosen, approved by me, you are now ready to go get some research. The first thing you're going to need, though, is some background information, some context. So what is your topic all about? What's going on with your topic? And how does it connect to World War II? So your job is to basically go search the internet and get some background information on World War II in general. And then you're gonna write a little bit about how your topic connects to or fits into the whole span of World War II. That's gonna be right on this document here that I have shared with your group leaders. Again, in this box here, you're gonna write a summary of World War II, one paragraph, no more. And then in this uh, uh, section here, you're gonna talk about how your topic what's going on in your topic and how it connects to World War II. Again, you're just getting background information, the who, what, when, where, and why of your um, topic that, that you were assigned or that you chose. All right, don't forget down here, any website you use on Google to get this information, make sure you make a list here. It's really easy. You click on this part right here, bullets, and you basically put the links in there because you're going to need to come back to them later. Number two, once you have the historical context done, now it's time to develop your historical investigation question. What's going to be the focus and the purpose of your entire investigation? How do you do that? Really simple. I shared your leaders in on a Google form. They're going to, um, you guys are going to meet together and you can do it through, you know, like I said, through email, through chat, through um, text, through FaceTime, uh, whatever it is that you can use. And you guys are going to develop three potential questions. All the directions on how to develop a question are here. I gave you three things to keep in mind when you create a question. Number one, aim for higher level, the hows and the whys. You don't want to say, what is Pearl, what was Pearl Harbor? You want to ask more like, why did Japan attack Pearl Harbor? Something a little bit deeper that's going to get more of a stance. Number two, keep it simple and focused. You don't want a question that's going to have a lot of parts or too many parts. And number three, you want a question that's broken up. Uh, you can break questions up into two parts if it does become a little bit too long. For example, you can say, who is Anne Frank and why did her diary have such a large impact on the world today? Things like that. So keep in mind on how to develop your question. Um, on the I gave you a couple links too. The first link is a, uh, a link that's going to bring you to a page that's going to tell you basically how to write a question and different ways in which that you can write a question. So it gives like how to start questions. 
And then the second link here are examples of questions from previous years for the PBL project. So if you take a look at this one, this will actually show you different questions that existed for different topics um, in past years for the PBL. Use these two to come up with a question that you feel will be a perfect guiding question for you. Write your three options here, or the leader can write the three options here. Your first and last name, leaders, your block, group letter, bam, submit. I will get that information. And then what I wanna do is meet with you and kind of go over your question and make sure that your question makes sense, your topic is solid, and you are ready to go. Sound good? So um, make sure that you check my office hours, leaders and the whole group. I would love to meet with you guys as a group would be great. So check my office hours. I'll have extended office hours for this week. Um, or if you can't make the office hours, just send me a, an email or a chat and say, hey, Mr. Hey, George, you have some time at blah, blah, blah. And pretty much I'm at home. So yes, I do have time. Just let me know ahead of time and I will put it together for you. Um, next, so let's go back to the checklist. So that's number two, that was number three, sorry, that was your investigation question. So now that you have the context complete and the investigation question solid, it's time to start to answer your investigation question by looking for historical sources. This is simple. You're gonna go online and you're going to, each member of the group is going to find one primary written and one primary visual to analyze. That means each person in the group will do two for a total of eight because there are four people in the group. Does that make sense? If not, send me a uh, an email or, um, with, with a question. Each group member, um, so let's talk a little bit about how to, how to find that. So it's simple, you go to Google, let's say your top topic is Anne Frank, you're gonna type your topic, and then you're going to click um, Pry Sports. So that's one, that's one way to do it, really simple. It gives you an idea of what they are, and then you're gonna go through and you're gonna click on these links. Link number one, link number two, link number three. Couple of things to keep in mind. Do not go straight to the first thing and then say, oh, I can't find anything. Go through each document. What you can do is actually hold down the control button and you press and then you can open it up in a new tab and open up the ones that look right. Di uh, Anne Frank Diary, that looks interesting. List of books and articles. Hmm, how Anne Frank Diary became international. No, primary sources with Frank. Yep, that one's good. Go through a teacher's guide to the Holocaust. That looks like teachers usually give you primary sources. Now, do not stop at one page. Go to page number two. Yes, a page number two exists on Google. There's actually lots of pages because there's over 17 million results. So keep going. Who is Anne Frank? Ooh, the Anne Frank house. Is Anne Frank's diary a primary source? Resources for teaching Anne Frank. So now that you have all of these websites open, you can go through and you can check each one for a primary source document for your topic. Each person picks one. Now, what you're gonna do next, let's go back to the checklist. Once you have found your primary source written and the visuals will be pretty easy, there's photographs, there's video recordings, whatever it is that you wanna use. But once you have your sources chosen, each group is going to complete an analysis sheet. Each member is going to complete an analysis sheet. I have shared this analysis sheet with your group leaders who will share it with you. The analysis sheet looks like this. First part, you're going to give a title right here to your document, whatever you want to call it. You're going to place your name, so which each student's doing their own, right? So primary source written number one, who's going to do it? And then the link to your source. Now, here's the thing. You can just go to your source and let's say you find it here. Um, let me find a source for you really quickly that I could use. And Frank's diary. Am I allowed to read it? Let's see. No, so they don't let us read the diary. Let's go through. not giving us any sources. This one's just giving us a list of book sources. Ooh, 
Ooh, here we go. Anne Frank photographs. All right, here you go. Here's one picture of Anne Frank and the photograph. So what you can do is two things. You can, I mean, you're going to do both. Copy and paste the link. You place the link right on here like that so that I know what's going on. And then right below the link, if you want, you can actually take the picture, you control copy image, and then you can paste the picture right on so that it's right there in front of you as you analyze it. This is actually for the written source, so this is the wrong spot, but I'm just giving you an example. A written spot, a written source. A primary written source would be an excerpt from her diary. So let's research Anne Frank diary excerpt. Excerpt means uh, a piece of it. The Anne Frank diary is actually an entire book. Here's an excerpt of Anne Frank diary. Let's click on it. Let's see. Read an excerpt from this book. There we go. Here is a primary source. So what you can do now is actually you're going to copy and paste the link, place the link, and then you can also take this if you want, if you're using all of it, right? You can take this, copy, and paste it onto the document. This one's a little bit too long, so you might not want to do it, but you can if you want to, or maybe there's a piece of it that you're using. Your choice. The point is, put it on this document, and then you're going to answer the questions for the written source on the document. And then you're going to answer the questions for the visual sources on the document. Okay. Last but not least, let's go to here. Now, again, that's what I just explained about copying and pasting the source and the link. You can also um, actually copy the source onto a separate document if you wanted to. So you can open up a, your own document, share it with yourselves and copy all your sources on there just in case the website disappears for some reason. And then at the bottom, Here's something that's really important because you're going to actually display this. So right here where it says summary of the source analysis, it's really simple. You're going to take these four pieces here. I mean, all the written parts here that you have, you're going to copy each one and put it into a paragraph form down here. So this is not anything new. It's just going to be taking what you did here and creating a summary of it in this part here that you can then use on your final project. All right. So a couple of things to keep in mind. Number one, uh, oh, uh, actually, let me really quickly, I want to give you just another uh, hint for searching for primary sources. If you really get stuck um, on finding primary sources, like I kind of did a little bit with Anne Frank, you can type in DBQ after your topic title, and you will actually get DBQs that were created with all the primary sources in them already, just like I give you. And then when you find those DBQs that include Anne Frank, it'll give you primary sources that you can use. Life in the Warsaw Ghetto, Discreets Against the Jews, nope, nope, Testimony, Early Nazi Policies, Identification Badge, and here we go. We got a dire entry from Anne Frank. See, so there are some sources as well. So that's a hint that's gonna really help you. Um, the primary source DBQs, those will go through and they will help you. All right, so again, like I said, um, come back to here. You need to have numbers one, two, three, and four, or actually it's really just two, three, and four because you should have one already completed. You should have two, three, and four done by Friday. If you have any questions, let me know. If it extends into the weekend, that's okay. Just let me know that you're gonna take a little bit extra time on it because I wanna go through and see how you're doing. If you have any questions, email me, or you can talk to your leader and have your leader email me and discuss. And um, I hope this video helps. Again, any questions that you have, email me. It's is not going to be the easy part. Is it's going to be difficult researching. So hopefully, um, it shouldn't be that difficult for you. And also, make sure you choose a topic that's interesting and that you're focused in on because that will make this whole process that much more engaging and exciting. Talk to you guys soon. Bye, everyone.